Now in this next part then, we're given that f of x has no real roots when f of x equals zero and asked to the, find the range of values of k that makes this so. Well, to do this, what springs to mind is that we have a quadratic here, okay? That if f of x equals zero, we'd have zero equals something of the form ax squared plus bx plus c, okay? And whenever you've got something like this, the nature of the roots is given by the discriminant. Do you remember the discriminant is given, let's just write it down, discriminant. It's given by b squared minus 4ac. It's the part of the formula that works out what x is. And for no real roots, this quantity had to be less than zero. Because in the formula, you end up square rooting this value. And if you've got a value less than zero, a negative value, you would get an error on your calculator giving you no real roots. So that's the key to doing this. We could say that for no real roots, b squared minus 4ac must be less than zero. This is the thinking part behind it, okay? So what is b? Well, b is going to be the 4k, so we therefore have 4k all squared, so put that in brackets, minus 4 times the a value, well the a is 1, I'll just put that in there as a token. And then c, well c is the 3 plus 11k, so put that there, 3 plus 11k. And that's got to be less than 0. We need to expand this and clean it up, so 4k all squared is going to be 16k squared, then we've got minus 4 multiplied by 3, so that's minus 12. And then minus 4 times the 11k, so that's going to give us minus 44k. And that's going to be less than 0. I notice that we could divide through by 4. Each of the 4 terms is divisible by 4. So if we do that, we're going to have 4k squared minus, well, I'm going to put this term next, okay, because we've got a quadratic expression here. Best to put this term next. So if I divide this by 4, we're going to have minus 11k, and then divide the minus 12 by 4, minus 3, and dividing 0 by 4, just is going to be 0, obviously. And because we divide it by a positive number, the inequality doesn't have to be reversed. Okay, so we've got this now. Now what we need to do is factorize this. So if we factorize it, couple of brackets here, less than zero, we're going to have 4k and a k to give me 4k squared. For the three, I'm going to choose plus one and minus three. And if you check that out, you will get your minus 11k because we're going to have minus 12k here, plus one k, so that's minus 11k. Now, when we get to this part, okay, we've got to solve this quadratic inequality. So, we know that the critical values, okay, the CVs for short, let's just write them as in here, CVs, the critical values are going to be when this factor equals zero, leading to 4k plus 1 equals zero, which will be that k equals minus a quarter. And when this factor equals zero, k would be three. So we have our critical values, k being minus a quarter and k equaling three. All right, don't fall for the trap that four k plus one must be less than zero or k minus three must be less than zero. That would be totally wrong. Okay, go on my tutorials if you're struggling with this on solving quadratic inequalities. Now, once we've got our critical values, then we could, say, draw a sketch graph. A sketch graph where we're looking at sketching the graph of, say, y equals 
4k squared minus 11k minus 3. Let's just put that up here. 4k squared minus 11k minus 3. Or you might prefer to have it in the factorized form. It makes no difference. Okay, 4k plus 1 and multiply by k minus 3. But the point about the critical values, okay, we'll just label that k by the way, that axis. The point about the critical values is that these are the points where this graph would cross the k axis, okay, would equal zero. So they'll be at minus a quarter and at three. And our graph then is going to be a parabola a positive parabola because we've got a positive k squared term so it's going to be u-shaped so it's going to look say something like this going through the minus a quarter then coming up through the three here and we're interested in where this value of y is less than zero where y if you like is negative and that's on this stretch down here y is negative and it's going to be negative then for these values between minus a quarter and three. Not including them though, because if you included minus quarter and three, it would equal zero. So therefore, we can wind this part of the question up by saying that therefore, from the graph, okay, from the graph, we have that k must lie between minus a quarter and three. All right. Well, I hope that's given you some idea then how you could do this part of the question.